guys, today we are going to be looking into the brand new All About Math Level 2. So Level 1 just came out earlier this summer. Level 2 has officially just released and I'm going to show you guys a first look inside this program. What can you expect? Several of you guys have asked me questions about what is involved as far as writing in this curriculum or what does it cover? Is math? Is money? Is all those things covered in this program? So I'm going to show you guys a look inside. Let's get started. So just like with any of the All About Learning tools, this is going to be multi-sensory. It's going to give you those step-by-step -step lesson plans and you're going to be able to easily cut customize it for each of your kids. Here are some of the components and I'll show you just a quick view of what all lessons are covered in here. But if you want to see a more in-depth view, you actually can check out this entire table of contents and a sample of the curriculum on the website. There's also placement tests there as well if you want to try it out. Here's some information about getting started. It has questions for you about is your child in the right level and there is a placement test online as well. So you want to make sure that you get the right level for your child because every math curriculum is different as to when they introduce different concepts and so you're definitely going to make sure you look into that. You'll have your student packet which we'll get to here in a second. Your All About Math Manipulative Kit which I already have from the All About Math one. The nice thing about that kit is if you get it once, it's all you need for all the levels that they're going to create. So it's very simple. You'll need a dry erase board and marker and then probably a folder for optional flashcards and things like that. Then it kind of talks you through what is the method. This is very much a mastery based program. It's set up very similarly to the way that the other All About Learning products are. I do like the fact that it does use so many manipulatives, but they're all manipulatives that are within that kit. So it makes it very easy to find and you're not spending a lot of time looking for different resources. This is something else I noticed when I saw All About Math and first opened it is that they're really careful to help make sure that they're helping set kids up for success. All About Learning was actually founded by a mom of a student with dyslexia. And while you can use any of their programs, whether your kids have dyslexia or not, they do special things like even with the numbers of making sure that they have a very clear style for the numbers so that kids aren't commonly reversing these particular numbers. This is kind of what others commonly do. And you can see this and this are pretty much the same thing just flipped whereas here the six and nine are very distinct and different this goes through how much time should you spend on math again they plan on that 20 minutes per day of teaching math and that that means that your lessons are going to take more than one day that's okay that is the way it was designed and if it takes you just one day to get through a lesson because your child's already really familiar with it, that's great. But they are going to get to harder concepts that take them a little bit longer, and that's fine. I love the fact that it's set up with the objective of what your kids are going to learn. It gives you all the tools you're going to need, and all of these are ones that are included in those math kits or in the student book. It gives you any kind of vocabulary that you're going to need, what you need to read before you begin, and the review section that you're going to do every time before you start. With this, then it's gonna get into the actual lesson, counting objects to tell how many, and it's gonna tell you what to say, and there's quotation marks there when it's something you're actually going to say out loud. You're gonna have activities to actually implement this. It's not just verbal teaching, but also that physical manipulation of different tools to be able to reinforce the concept. And then they have these amazing little tip charts in here, and I love this. So they're like, hey, the goal is for your student to understand that a full 10 frame this up here, represents 10 without having to count one at a time. So they should start with a group of 10, right? And then count from there. So if there was 10 here, then you'd start 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, if that makes sense. Um, so yes, there's 19 connecting cubes in this group. So this is concepts that they started to introduce in math one. But if your child has not learned this yet, this lesson you might spend a little more time on and it's got ideas on how you can review that concept if this is newer to them. Then you've got additional lessons and activities. Again, this is a lot of material. That's why it's going to take more than one day to do. But you've got your different activities. You'll make sure that they understand. It's got, I love the fact that it's got the answer key right here. And you're looking to see with your child to make sure they really understand how to do it before you're moving on. Once you're ready to move on, you'll use the sticker chart that's in the student book to mark that, and then you'll go on to the next lesson. So 
I got a lot of questions in my last video about All About Math 1 as to what all they cover. And again, you can go through that really detailed index to be able to see all of that. But just know that it does get into several of the things you guys were asking about. It covers money in this one. It covers time in this one multiple digit addition and subtraction. I really like the fact that they have several lessons on story problems and how to break down multiple step, like more complicated story problems for your child. It works on measurements and estimations. There is figuring out greater than, less than with bigger numbers and harder concepts. Um, it goes into things like AM and PM, so you can make sure your kids have a good understanding of that. So some of these things like AM and PM, they might already have down, but yet they might not fully have down things like getting into money. So that's why that 20 minute marker is so perfect. Cause if they have it down already, they can usually finish it in 20 minutes. And then you can spend more time on the ones that you need to do. There's a lot of working with money and time in the second half of this book, which I think is fantastic. And I'm excited to get to some of these games because while my girls are aware of different money and they can do the different identifying the different things actually making change and working on that is something they just need more practice in so this is going to give them really creative fun ways for that practice another thing i really like about this curriculum is they have these extended practice sections in the lessons these are completely optional so if your child has the concept mastered you can just move on but this gives additional ways for your child to work on that skill a little bit more in and in a different way than what they previously done because i know for my kids they need a lot of review but they want variety in their review as much as possible they don't want to sit there and do the exact same thing over and over and over again so i love the fact that they offer that as an option there's also a sheet that is in the beginning of a student book that i will show you here in a second and that one will um, have a place where you can mark off the different skills as they complete it and if you actually date it the way it's designed it works as a great opportunity to use it for record keeping so that's a fantastic option as well um, okay I want to show you a little further into the book this is parts of a fraction this is one of the last couple of lessons and so they are starting to work on fractions and understanding how all of that works creating fractional parts is lesson 56 and then again you've got the additional practice that you got reading and writing fractions so you're they've really kind of grouped things together in a logical way which i appreciate show what you know putting it all together this is their opportunity to make sure that they're understanding before you go to that next section so these show what you know sections are built in automatically every little bit all throughout the lesson so this is the fifth one that is in the book um the fifth and final one but they are all throughout here and these are just opportunities to see and figure out kind of an assessment it's not really a test but an assessment to make sure your child understands all those concepts before you move into the next section of the material and so that's also a kind of a great thing to have that opportunity to review and to make sure that they understand everything before moving forward then in the appendix of course there's always great resources don't ever ignore the appendix in an all about learning resource because they've got great things here here this has got kind of a scope and sequence that you can use it's got instructions on how to make one of the things you'll need it's got guidelines for using manipulatives and drawings um, more about that number reversal problem and how to solve that and teach that with your kids now let's take a look at the student materials. So this is the student materials and it kind of gives you an idea of what all is involved. But just like with level one, you're going to have these harder cardstock items. These are going to be reused in multiple lessons, which is why they're not just one of the tear out sheets in the workbook. And so with this, you've got a 10 frame, a double 10 frame. You've got three reading strategies. This is how you're going to be taught to read word problems. You've got number cards. It looks like some of these are duplicates from what is in the level one, although these have foxes on them, which is really fun. So if you didn't do the level one, you're okay. If you need it, they'll put it in here. But then there's also some new things in here that were not in level one, like a tens and ones chart. You've got more shape cards, uh, place value hundreds chart, comparison mat, because you're gonna be working on greater than less than this one. You've got an open number line, analog clock, since we're working on time so much. So that's great. Money cards, these are all perforated, so you can tear them off easily. Oh, I like the fact that they show both sides of the coin, literally, <laughs> so that your child can master that from both sides and options. 
You've got your coin values chart. Some people really like to laminate these um, for even more durability, but they are made of a, a, a sturdier cardstock. These are place value discs that I saw be utilized in one of the later lessons. Those tens rounding maps, we're gonna learn to round numbers from 10 and from 100. Oh, I see. So on one side is 100, on one side is 10. Fraction circles, fraction mat, fraction shapes. And then this brings us to our student book. If you are utilizing this with multiple kids, you can definitely get multiple student books. And what I just showed you is the student pack that comes with all of those cards. It comes with the sticker sheet and it comes with the student book. If you're using it again for another child, you all you have to replace is the actual learning activity book. Although a lot of families do choose to reutilize this book and I'll kind of show you how they do that. Um, I don't know which way I'm gonna end up doing it. So there's the chart here if you have multiple students. You can print out this chart online. This is the daily review tracker. So again, date started, date mastered, and it'll help you kind of figure out where those lessons fall. I assumed this would be the case, but there is gonna be more writing involved in level two than there was in level one. Some people will use a sleeve protector um, to put the items in and then they'll use a dry erase marker to write with. The only negative to that is that, uh, well, there's two negatives, I think. One is that you have no records officially. I guess you could take pictures, but you have no physical written record <laughs> of it. Um, and then also the other aspect is, is that you have, um, your child is learning to write with dry erase, which is great, but dry erase writes very differently than a physical pencil. There's just different traction and whatnot. So just things to keep in mind. I'm not trying to persuade you one way or the other. Um, they do have cards like this though that you're gonna utilize, cut out, and put on those spaces. They have all sorts of fun games that will help to teach each of these. Again, more word problems here. And as we go on, you'll see a lot of different fun ways to incorporate the math lessons through play, which is a really big aspect. I have found that my kids learn a lot better when they can play with them, when they can uh, interact with the material in different ways. And all the instructions for these games are within the actual teacher books. So you're definitely gonna need that teacher book in order to play these um, because there really aren't specific instructions on how to play it within just the student book. Because a lot of times people ask me that as well. Of, do I need the teacher book and the student book? Yes, you definitely do. As far as the manipulatives kit goes, you don't have to buy their kit if you already have all of the contents at your home. But um, I do like to have that kit just so I have everything all at one place. Um, I know several people in the All About Learning Facebook group um, that they have. They have a support Facebook group. A lot of people there looked through it and they said, if you're piecing it out and you don't have that stuff already, it's going to come out to that price anyways to piece it out together. So it's kind of nice to get their kit because then you know you have everything and it comes in a nice sturdy box. But um, yeah, this is just kind of giving you an idea of the types of things that you'll see within this lesson, things to keep in mind with it. And you can see that there's just a lot of fun learning all throughout the year that they have in store. So I can't wait to utilize this with my girls and to get into all of this great practice and master these skills. As you can see, it is a really amazing program that is open and go, easy to teach and easy to learn. I'm really excited to dive into this with my two little ones this year. If you wanna see how I prep all about math, I can show you this video here that shows how I do it with level one. Honestly, it's gonna be very similar with level two, with the exception that since there are those hard back sheets, the things like the comparison charts or the hundreds charts or things like that, I think I'm gonna put those in one of those Velcro pouches and put that at the beginning of the binder for each level. And that way I'm not mixing up those different charts. But other than that, this is how I plan to do 